Chapter 4 of Leave It to Smith. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Grace Buchanan. Leave It to Smith by P. G. Woodhouse. Chapter 4 Painful Scene at the Drones Club. Meanwhile, at the Drones Club, a rather painful scene had been taking place. Smith, regaining the shelter of the building, had made his way to the washroom, where, having studied his features with interest for a moment in the mirror, he smoothed his hair, which the rain had somewhat disordered, and brushed his clothes with extreme care. He then went to the cloakroom for his hat. The attendant regarded him as he entered, with the air of one whose mind is not wholly at rest. "'Mr. Waldrick was in here a moment ago, sir,' said the attendant. "'Yes,' said Smith, mildly interested. "'An energetic, bustling soul, Comrade Waldrick. Always somewhere. Now here, now there.' "'Asking about his umbrella he was,' pursued the attendant, with a touch of coldness. "'Indeed, asking about his umbrella, eh?' made a great fuss about it sir he did and rightly said smith with approval the good man loves his umbrella of course i had to tell him that you took it sir i would not have it otherwise assented smith heartily i like this spirit of candour there must be no reservations no subterfuges between you and comrade waldrick let all be open and above board he seemed very put out, sir. He went off to find you. I am always glad of a chat with Comrade Waldrick, said Smith. Always. He left the cloakroom and made for the hall, where he desired the porter to procure him a cab. This, having drawn up in front of the club, he descended the steps, and was about to enter it, when there was a hoarse cry in his rear, and through the front door there came bounding a pinkly, indignant youth, who called loudly, "'Here, hi, Smith, dash it!' Smith climbed into the cab and gazed benevolently out at the newcomer. "'Ah, Comrade Waldrick,' he said, "'what have we on our mind?' "'Where's my umbrella?' demanded the pink one. "'The cloakroom waiter says you took my umbrella. I mean, a joke's a joke, but that was a dashed good umbrella.' "'It was indeed,' Smith agreed cordially. It may be of interest to you to know that I selected it as the only possible one from among a number of competitors. I fear that this club is becoming very mixed, Comrade Waldrick. You, with your pure mind, would hardly believe the rottenness of some of the umbrellas I inspected in the cloakroom. Where is it? the cloakroom you turn to the left as you go in at the main entrance at my umbrella dash it where's my umbrella ah there said smith and there was a touch of manly regret in his voice you have me i gave it to a young lady in the street where she is at the present moment i could not say the pink youth tottered slightly you gave my umbrella to a girl a very loose way of describing her you would not speak of her in that light fashion if you had seen her comrade waldrick she was wonderful i am a plain blunt rugged man above the softer emotions as a general thing but i frankly confess that she stirred a chord in me which is not often stirred she thrilled my battered old heart comrade waldrick there is no other word. Thrilled it. But dash it! Smith reached out a long arm and laid his hand paternally on the other's shoulder. Be brave, Comrade Waldrick, he said. Face this thing like a man. I am sorry to have been the means of depriving you an excellent umbrella, but as you will readily understand, I had no alternative. It was raining. She was over there, crouched despairingly beneath the awning of that shop. She wanted to be elsewhere, but the moisture lay in wait to damage her hat. What could I do? 
what could any man worthy of the name do but go down to the cloakroom and pinch the best umbrella in sight and take it to her yours was easily the best there was absolutely no comparison i gave it to her and she has gone off with it happy once more this explanation said smith will i am sure sensibly diminish your natural chagrin you have lost your umbrella comrade waldrick but in what a cause in what a cause comrade waldrick you are now entitled to rank with sir philip sidney and sir walter raleigh the latter is perhaps the closer historical parallel he spread his cloak to keep a queen from wetting her feet you by proxy yielded up your umbrella to save a girl's hat posterity will be proud of you comrade waldrick i shall be vastly surprised if you do not go down in legend and song children in ages will come to cluster about their grandfather's knees saying tell us how the great waldrick lost his umbrella grandpapa and he will tell them and they will rise from the recital better deeper broader children but now as i see that the driver has started his meter i fear i must conclude this little chat which i for one have heartily enjoyed drive on he said leaning out of the window i want to go to ada clarkson's international employment bureau in shaftesbury avenue the cab moved off the hon hugo waldrick after one passionate glance in its wake realized that he was getting wet and went back into the club arriving at the address named smith paid his cab and having mounted the stairs delicately knuckled the ground glass window of enquiries my dear miss clarkson he began in an affable voice the instant the window had shot up if you can spare me a few moments of your valuable time miss clarkson's engaged smith scrutinized her gravely through his monocle aren't you miss clarkson enquiries said she was not then said smith there has been a misunderstanding for which he added cordially i am to blame perhaps i could see her anon you will find me in the waiting room when required he went into the waiting room and having picked up a magazine from the table settled down to read a story in the girl's pet the january number of the year 1919 for employment agencies like dentists prefer their literature of a matured vintage he was absorbed in this when eve came out of the private office end of chapter 4 recording by grace buchanan